Good morning, everyone. It is good for us to be here today. The topic for today is, it's not just words. And this is just a little refresher to remind us all that our words are the most important weapon we have. The first thing in the morning, we should just start saying things, just start declaring things. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing. I am glad. I have the very life of the living God alive in me. Jesus is here with me. He's always with me until the end of time. Not even death can separate me from the love of my Father. Good morning, goodness. Good morning, mercy. My steps are being ordered by the Lord. This is my day. Not today, devil. You are a lie, and you already lost. I remember the parade. You see, our very own Father, he used his words to create the universe and all therein. He's our example. You know, sometimes I just sit back and I think about how he said it once in the beginning. He said, let there be. And here we are thousands of years later, and everything he created is still here. He only created the earth once, the sun once, the moon once. And they are still here on the power of his word. You know, every time you look up at the sun, you are physically looking at God's word being manifested. When God said something, something happened. So that tells us that our words, that speaking and calling things that are not, it's a God principle. And we're his kids, so it works for us too. And one of my favorite truths, in the Bible is Proverbs 18:21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It means whatever I say the most, whatever I allow to come up out of my heart, I will have it. So what are you saying today? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? And believe it or not, we have a choice. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. And just last week, and I know this is on such a small scale in comparison to what others may be going through, But for some reason, I felt upset. There were literally zero reasons for me to feel this way. Nothing had even happened. And even though I felt it and I thought it, I never let negative words come out of my mouth. Instead, I just kept saying, Lord, you are my soul's delight. You are my soul's delight. I just kept saying it. And before I knew it, all the upset and the ugliness had just left. I chose life. I turned it around. I've planted Proverbs 18.21 in my heart and in my mind. I know what I say I will have. And I believe this is a way that we learn to live out of our spirit. Don't allow negative emotions dictate how you react. Our five senses, they don't rule us. Our spirit rules us. And, you know, there's something about opening your mouth that releases the power of God. It moves things in the spirit realm. It's like a spiritual law. It's the way Father set it up. So it's good for us to use our authority and declare things. And speaking of the spiritual realm, always remember to pray in tongues. It's a key, and I know that it opens doors. And I've said this from the very beginning. I will not catch COVID. I've said it so much, I truly believe it. And I've been exposed to it firsthand. My sister had it. And one night, I laid down to go to sleep. And all of a sudden, this headache came on. And I haven't experienced a headache like this before. All I can explain it is as I saw like lightning. I got dizzy. And it crossed my mind that it was COVID trying to catch me. But all I said was, I'll be all right in the morning. Somehow I just knew it. I knew I was going to be all right. And the next day when I woke up, all I wanted were some pancakes. See, I remember my father told me that he himself 
took my infirmities and he carried away my diseases. I can stand on that. I can confess it. I can say it. And just to anyone that thinks, well, I have been saying it. I have been making positive confessions, but I don't see anything yet. I humbly and most respectfully ask that you check your your level of doubt, because if you're waiting to see it, you're not acting in faith. And believe me, I've been there. It's hard to believe something you can't even see. But we got to learn to take Father at his word and always remember the centurion soldier. He trusted Jesus on the power of his word alone. And our Father, he loves us. He's rooting for us. He wants his children to trust him just at his word. See, that's how this works. And when our prayers are answered, it brings glory to our Father. In John 15, 7 and 8, it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And then bearing fruit in this scripture, it means that your prayers are answered. And again, saying God's word out loud and meditating on it, it helps penetrate your heart. And you may say, well, what's the benefit in that? See, the word is a seed, and when planted in your heart, it produces a harvest. It produces victory. It becomes part of you. It's how you think. It's what you believe. It's how you respond. It's how we experience the way life here on earth. And my new motto is read it, believe it, and say it in Jesus' name. And just one more little reminder, the tongue is great for producing life, but we got to be careful because it also can produce death. In James, he describes the tongue almost as if it's like an enemy of the body. In James 3, 6, it says, the tongue is full of iniquity and that it can defile the whole body. See, what you say, what you allow to come up out of your heart, it can defile you or it can produce life. And then in James 3 and 9, it tells us with the tongue, We bless the Lord and we curse people. And this can literally be um, just in the natural. Have you ever been singing a worship song while driving and then someone cuts you off and goes slow? Do you bless them or do you curse them? God's word should always come first in every situation. And, yeah, we're all working it out. Nobody is perfect. We are getting there. So just remember that your words are a powerhouse. It'll make or break you. It's literally a matter of life and death. And, Father, I just thank you for your word. God, your word means everything. If you said it, we can have it. Your words have provided salvation, forgiveness, life, and health. Thank you for your loving kindness, Father. You sent your word. Through your word, we get to know you. We love you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for meeting every need of every person on this call, Father. I thank you that they experience you today in a way like never before. In Jesus' name, you receive all the glory, the honor, and the praise forever. Amen.